Right, hi, so this is for example five. So this is something called um, half angle formulas. And they've kind of always been on the spec, but they've never been examined on a normal A level. And it's using the double angle formula to change it. So all I've done is I've replaced 2A with A. So that means that A becomes A over 2. And that's exactly what's happened here. Now, I think it's nicer. If you have little brackets around these, then you know that that's the angle. And you can kind of see it a little bit easier. Now, with the cos A one, there's two other equations. Because I can replace 1 minus sine squared. I can replace sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. So that would give me cos A is 2 cos squared a over 2 minus 1. So that's, so that's replacing um, sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. Oh, plus 1, sorry. And then I can replace cos squared with 1 minus sine squared. So I've got cos a is, what's that going to be? 1 minus 2 sine squared squared a over 2. There. Uh, is that right? I'm going to double check as my maths worked out right. I've got a sine error. It's going quite late with this. So cos squared becomes 1 minus, so sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. So no, that is still a minus 1, isn't it? Yeah. Goes in. This is what I, I never remember them. I always just do them, so I always get mistaken with the, uh, with the end sign at the end. Uh, uh, that's okay. Right. Okay. Right, so let's have a look at this example. So this example says sine squared is 2 sine squared theta of theta over 2. Now I'm doing something to do with half angles. So it kind of makes sense to look at the half angle part of it. In an exam, it's a little bit more tricky, but because I'm doing something on half angles, I'm going to look at half angles. And this is where it helps for the fact that I've wrote these two extra equations on. Because I've got, if you look, I've got 2 sine squared theta over 2. So if I look at using cos A is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2, I can rearrange it. So 2 sine squared, oops, thank God my theta is too big for a theta over 2. 2 sine squared theta over 2 is 1 minus cos theta. Yeah. Got to be careful now because I'm tired. Right, so what I'm saying is I can replace that. So let me just put a little thing around this. I can replace that with just 1 minus cos theta. So now I've got sine squared theta is 1 minus cos theta. And that looks a lot nicer than what I started with. So I've got sine squared is 1 minus cos. So now I can change the sine squared into 1 minus cos squared theta is 1 minus cos theta. Then if I rearrange it as a quadratic, so cos squared theta minus cos theta, the ones disappear. Uh, stick it in polynomial and I'll get 0 and 1 out. Because if I take out cos theta as a factor, I get cos theta minus 1. So I've got cos theta is 0, and I've got cos theta minus 1 is 0. So cos theta is 1. But from poly, I'll just get a 0 and a 1 out. So what does that give me then? So for the cos graph, the cos of 0 is pi by 2, and 3 pi by 2. And for the inverse cos of 1, that's going to be 0 and 2 pi. There we go. And I can do that on my calculator and get it all back. So that's the end of that. Like I say, this has not been particularly examined. It kind of, you use it with further. It's one of the weird things where they just force us to do something. Oh, here we go. Right, so there's a consolidation questions which we'll work on in class. So that potentially is that lesson done. Well done, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.